So what is left to do is basically re-examine the hardware-software stack. So from the software-centric point of view, these modern languages like Python, which is becoming the most popular programming language, they're really great for programmers, but they run really slowly as also. From the hardware side, the only trick architects have left is domain-specific architectures. So the domain-specific architectures only do a, two, a few tasks. They don't do everything. They're not like a standard CPU. They do a few things, but they do them really well. And you can combine these two together. The domain-specific languages and domain-specific ar architectures are synergistic it's because we're raising the hardware-software interface. So how slow is Python? So this is going from Python to highly optimized uh, through a series of steps. So if we take it from Python, we're doing matrix multiply. To rewriting it in C, we go 50 times faster. If we explicitly identify the loops, the parallel loops in the code, which compilers can't figure out, another factor of seven. How about making it match all that complicated memory hierarchy, three levels of caches? That's a factor of 20. And finally, if we use the SIMD instructions that the, uh, our previous speaker talked about, so you can do 32 operations in a single instruction, that's another factor of nine. You multiply it all together, that's a factor of 63,000. <laughs> so it, for, for C code, if you could make the compiler go twice as fast, you'd be a hero. You could, you could make Python go a thousand times faster. If you did that, you'd get Turing awards for that kind of thing. So that potential is laying there, available for us to exploit. How about domain-specific architectures? You know, they tailor it to the domain, but it's not like, it doesn't only do one application, it, there's software there, so it can do a range of applications. But it, what requires from the people who want to work in this area, hardware, software, co-design, they have to know about the domains themselves and a lot more of the stack. Neural networks is what we're talking about at this conference, but there's other examples of domain-specific architectures. It's the only path left. Why do they work? It's not magic. Basically, there's, given that we're limited by power, we want more power-efficient solutions. So single instruction, multiple data, that's more restrictive than multiple instruction, multiple data, but it's a lot more efficient to when you use it. Similarly, very long instruction word versus the modern CPU of speculative out of order. The first one's a lot more efficient if it works. We optimize the memory bandwidth. We don't just use caches where we're probabilistically guessing where the data should be, it's under software control, and we don't need the accuracy that you need for supercomputers. Nobody needs 64-bit floating point. You can even get away with narrow integers. And how do you program these things? You, the domain-specific languages lets you do special purpose hardware.